Hello, today I'm going to be checking out the latest Mini ITX case from Deepcool. It's the CH160. It comes in both black and white. Um, I don't currently have any pricing information on it just yet, but what I will do is put a link to the product in the description once it's available, and you'll be able to click on that to find out how much it's going to cost you. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the case. So you'll see one of the case's standout features is the handle on the top. And as the case is nice and small, you shouldn't have any difficulty moving the system about once it's assembled. To remove the tempered glass side panel, we've got two small screws in the back you're gonna to need to remove, and then you're gonna be able to pull the panel backwards and left away. And our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. If we take a look at the back of the panel we just removed, you'll notice we have a large perforated area and this is designed to provide airflow to your power supply. You'll notice that Deepcool are going with just mesh on the side as there's no additional dust filter. So once you've got the two side panels off, you're gonna be able to remove the top panel. There's two screws on either side and once these have been removed, the top panel can simply be pushed up from the back and lift it away. If we take a look at the underside of our top panel, you'll notice we've got a full length nylon dust filter. To remove it, all you need to do is free the little clips up on the side, and then you're gonna be able to lift it out for cleaning. On the top of the case, you'll notice we've got two reels for mounting fans, and you're gonna be able to mount up to two 120 millimeter fans on the top of the case, as well as a 120 millimeter fan at the rear. At the front of the case, we've got a removable bracket, and on this, you're gonna be able to mount either a 120 millimeter fan, two and a half inch SSD, or three and a half inch hard drive. In terms of our case's front I.O., we've got a power button, we've got two USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port, and a combined headphone and microphone jack. So the bottom panel with our case's I.O. is removable, and then to install your graphics card, you probably are gonna to need to remove it. The case doesn't offer any radiator mounting or options, so you are gonna to have to go with an air cooler, although the air cooling support is pretty generous at up to 172 millimeters in height. And as you'd expect, given the case's size, it is only compatible with mini ITX motherboards. At the rear of the case, we've got three horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets, and in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is 305 millimeters. In terms of power supply mounting options, the case is compatible with SFX, SFXL, as well as full-sized ATX power supplies, provided they're less than 140 millimeters in length. If you do go with an SFX or SFXL power supply, you're gonna be able to mount it directly on the side of the case, meaning you are still gonna be able to fit a 120 millimeter fan at the front. If you wanna go with a full-sized ATX power supply, you are gonna to have to move the little bracket at the top further towards the right side of the case. And that is then gonna allow you to secure ATX power supply at the top. As you can see, there's no way you're gonna be able to fit a front fan with the ATX power supply installed at the front although you are able to fit either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive in front of the power supply. The case comes with a power supply extension. It's great to see it's color matched to the case and there's a cutout on the back of the case to pass the cable through. And you can see we've also got full length nylon dust filters both at the bottom and at the front. So what I want to do now is give you a better look at the build I put together in the case. So taking a look at our temperatures, our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D idled at 40 degrees and reached a maximum of 77 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test with all components being stressed. Our Tough Gaming RTX 4070 Ti idled at 29 degrees and reached a maximum of 75 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, we had an average noise level of 33 decibels at idle and 49 decibels under load. So in terms of my experience of building in the case, being a mini ITX case, you do expect there to be a few more problems or things you're gonna to have to do in a certain order compared to a bigger case, which is gonna be a little bit more forgiving. So I think the first potential problem you might have is putting in your motherboard's top left screw. Um, if you've already installed your air cooler, this was quite difficult to get your screwdriver onto the screw and there was no way to do it with the screwdriver straight. So I had to do it at quite an angle. It was possible to turn the screw but not the easiest thing to do. So you may want to consider installing your motherboard first and then installing your CPU killer afterwards. So while I do recommend installing the rear fan, first of all, I would leave installing the front fan until after you've installed your power supply. It was still possible to install an SFX power supply in from the bottom before lifting it up towards the top round the front fan, but you will find it much easier to install your power supply first and then install the front fan. 
In terms of plugging cables into the motherboard, you've got great access at the top of the case, being able to remove the two rails at the top. Um, where things are a little bit limited is actually plugging in your 24 pin cable once your power supply has been installed. So I would recommend plugging in your 24 pin cable and all your case cables before you lift the power supply up into place. So in terms of cable management, there is space behind your graphics card to manage some cables down at the back. And you've also got a large space beneath your power supply for managing your cables. So initially when I did my cable management, I did route all my case cables directly through to the back of the case over the top of the power supply cables. So what I found to look actually much cleaner was routing all the case cables directly through to the back of the case and then just bringing them in at the side of the power supply and plugging them in so they're all hidden nicely at the back. So in terms of installing the graphics card, the graphics card that I use for this build is pretty much at the maximum limit for the case and I was almost touching the bottom of the case. But because you are able to remove the IO panel at the side and Deepcool have really extended the cutout towards the front of the case for your graphics card, I had no problem at all fitting this graphics card into the case. I think the final thing to mention is a word of caution if you are thinking of going with a full-sized ATX power supply in this case. If you do mount it to the front, it's going to be blocking the case's main source of intake. And another major issue you're going to run into, unless you're planning on using custom cables, is that your cables are going to be really long and cable management is going to be much more difficult. So moving on to the things I liked about the case, I think the first thing I like about the case is the looks. I think this is a really good looking case. Um, it comes in either black or white. And I love the fact that there's a handle on the top, so you are going to be able to move the PC about really easily. In terms of what you can actually fit in the case, I think this is pretty good. Um, you can fit a large premium air cooler, graphics cards up to a maximum length of 305 millimeters, and in terms of modern graphics cards, there's loads of space in front of them. So I ended up having to use the adapter that came with a graphics card, but yet I had no problems plugging it in and getting the tempered glass side panel back on. So moving on to the things I didn't like about the case, and there's actually not an awful lot to say here. I think the first thing I wasn't a big fan of was the fact that you had to use lots of screws to secure all the panels into place. Um, I do see why Deep Cool have gone with this. They want to keep everything looking clean and compact, and there was, if there was lots of big thumb screws sticking out from the back of the case, it just wouldn't look clean. So I do see why they've gone with small screws. I think the only other thing I didn't like was the fact that the perforated area on the side panel didn't have a dust filter on it, particularly given how good a job they've done of covering all the other panels with big premium dust filters. So we've now reached the stage in review where I need to tell you should you go out and get this case. Now that is a difficult question to answer without knowing the price of the case, but in general I've been really impressed with this case. So if you are somebody who's looking for a good looking premium mini ITX case that is portable with a handle on the top that you can carry it about um, with good cooling support for large air coolers and large modern graphics cards that is relatively easy to build in and with a good build quality, I think Deep Club definitely got you covered with this one and I can most definitely recommend it. If you are thinking of doing a build in the case, um, I have made a full step-by-step -step build guide in it and I'll put a link to that video in the description. If you have enjoyed this review, please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.